Good afternoon everyone. Today I'll be discussing the livestock pests and their effect on animals and cattle. At first, let us identify what are pests. Pests are destructive organisms. They could be plant or animal that attack food, plants or livestock. They are usually associated with annoyance or unwanted behavior. In this presentation, we will be discussing the effect of pets on livestock and what kind of annoyances and disturbances do they cause the livestock organisms. The first order that we will be discussing of pests is order Pithyraptra, which are the louse. There are two types of louse, chewing and sucking. Chewing lice have larger rounder heads. They feed on skin debris, blood, and scabs. Chewing lice cause the most irritation to the cattle. Sucking lice have a small narrow distinct head, which are, des which are designed for piercing the skin. They are usually found around the head and neck of the cattle. Large infestations could cause anemia to the host organism. Lousy cattle may cause damage to fences, yards, or trees, which the cattle use as a rubbing post. The fur of lousy cattle takes on a distinct rough, scurfy appearance, and at the time, areas of skin are rubbed raw. To treat lice infestations, the type of lice must be identified to help the usage of the proper treatment. Irvermicetin is very effective against sucking lice. Other forms of pesticides are effective against chewing lice. The treatment is only effective against the adult forms and not the eggs. Therefore, the process must be done repeatedly under a frame of three weeks to ensure the hatching of the eggs and before transforming into adults and by such producing more eggs. The second order that will be discussed is order Diptera, family Ostridae, which resemble the commonly known Botflies. Hypoderma sp are pests of cattle that are found in North America, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Hypoderma sp is a pest that uses the cattle as a nest for its eggs. The parents tend to secrete their eggs at lower parts of the body, near the tail of the cattle. The issue arises when the eggs hatch. The larvae travels to the end of the hair follicle, penetrating the skin causing a lot of inflammation in the skin as they eat through the connective tissue. The secretion the larvae produce can cause severe pain and paralysis if they reach the spinal cord. As the larvae escape, they tend to enter certain regions in the body as the esophagus mistakenly. This could cause rupture of the esophagus and the death of the host. These forms of infestations are usually treated by insecticides such as dormacetin and epriomacetin. The third family that will be discussed is family Tabindae, which include the horse and the deer flies. When looking at the structure of the flies, it's noted that the horse fly are considerably larger than the deer flies, heavily bodied with huge heads, and from three quarters of an inch to an inch longer than the deer flies. Female horse and deer flies are very vicious and painful biters. They feed on blood of cattle, horses, hogs, mule dogs, and even humans. These flies cut through the skin with their knife mouthparts, efficiently designed for sucking blood. When they fly away, drops of blood fall from their mouth on the skin, exempting other feeding sites for other insects. Due to the multiple hosts that these flies feed from, they are vectors of various diseases. These diseases include anthrax, tularemia, anaplasmosis, hog cholera, equine infectious malaria, and filariasis. Human bites could lead to various sufferings from severe lesions, high fever, and general disability in the body. The third order that will be discussed is order Siphonoptera, which are the common known fleas. The first flea that we're going to discuss is the Chogi flea, which is Tunga 
penetrance. This parasitic wasp that is found in most tropical and subtropical environments at 1 mm long in size is the smallest known flea to humankind. The parasitic flea lives in soil and sand, feeding on warm-blooded hosts such as humans, cattle, sheep, dogs, and mice. Breeding female chigos burrow into exposed skin on the feet of mammals. They remain there for two consecutive weeks while developing their own eggs, during which time they swell dramatically sometimes causing intense irritation. When the flea bores itself in the body, it bores its head in, leaving the caudal part of the abdomen outside to support breathing, defecation while feeding on blood, and the releasing of eggs. Eggs are excreted outside the host's body. The flea then dies and is slowed off with the host's body. If the flea is left within the skin, dangerous complications could occur, including secondary infections, as the loss of nails and the deformation of toes. To help treat such inf infestations, various methods have been developed. They can be treated by, the, by removing them by tweezers if not such a large infestation has occurred. They can also be suffocated and killed by petroleum jelly. And then the issuance of antibiotics to help prevent the holes from getting infected by any other forms of diseases, such as gangrene. Moreover, I would like to conclude that not all pests are dangerous. Some pests do include a symbiotic relationship with the host, where both parties benefit. Here are my references. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you very much.